Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Fritz and this is my first technical sound design reel. This is a first person escape game set in a medieval dungeon. I thought it would be a cool setup for an immersive soundtrack. Let's press a key and start the tour. So here we are in the game's main menu. The whoosh sound was created using Reformer by Krotos Audio. It plays continuously while we are in the menu, but its volume is assigned to an RTPC. By default, the RTPC is set to zero, so no sound is being heard. By tracking the torture's location frame by frame, I can measure its speed. The speed value is used to control the RTPC. Okay, good. So let's go find that statue. three distinct acoustic identities in this game, the exterior, the dungeon, and the crypt, which we'll see later. Each location has a linear ambience loop, as well as randomly triggered sound to enrich and make the soundscape more dynamic. For the acoustics of the different locations, I have used Wise's spatial audio volumes and acoustic portals. Looks like a statue is missing there. I added clothing sounds to the character, which are triggered using the same wise events as the footsteps. I also experimented a little bit with the variations in the footstep sounds based on the player's actions. For example, if the player quickly changes direction during movement, like doing a U-turn, the footstep sound during the change of direction will be less prominent, and you'll hear more of the player's clothing sounds. For almost every sound sources, I've added a collision sphere or a box. When the player walks into it, it plays or it stops the sound, just before it comes within listening range. If I spawn into the collision, no sound is being played, because we did not actually hit the sphere. The default sound occlusion system in WISE can be quite binary. For the sound of the chains, I opted to use another RTPC. The timeline managing the door opening animation also generates a curve that changes the value of the RTPC. This integration helps synchronize the sound filtering with the visual aspect of the door opening. The chain sound leads us into this room. Since players can interact with objects and pick them up, adding a sound effect for collisions was necessary. This system can certainly be improved, but here's how I've implemented it. We track and compare the positions of the statue. During an impact, if the statue's speed is greater than a certain negative or positive value, here, 4, we play the big impact sound. If it's less than 4, we play the small impact sound. Looks like we found the crypt. This is the final puzzle of the minigame. We realized that when the pedestal is empty, the door closes. We could find an object to replace the statue and use it to escape. That concludes my presentation. I've identified some areas to explore further before tackling the next game, such as the impact sound system and spline-based sound attenuation. Thank you for watching. If you need sound for a game jam or your game, please feel free to contact me. Have a great day, everyone.